Hi, in this brief video I want to talk about the madness of Emperor Justin II. Now, hi, in this brief video I want to talk about the madness of Emperor Justin II. Um, and the madness took place at the end of his sixth year of his reign, in the sixth year of his reign. And the um, and we got the primary source here by the infamous priest John of Ephesus. And John of Ephesus claims that he sent it by means of an evil angel who suddenly entered onto him and took his form and domineering over him cruelly and fearfully, making him an example of the terribleness of his malice. For suddenly it destroyed his reason and his mind was agitated and darkened and his body given over both to secret and open tortures and cruel agony, so that he even uttered the cries of various animals, and barked like a dog, bleated like a goat. And then he would mew like a cat, and then again crow like a cock, and many such things were done by him, contrary to human reason. Being the workings of the Prince of Darkness, to whom he had been given up, and who had darkened his understanding and had taken it captive and who wrought in him everything that he did. I mean, this is real poetry. I mean, John of Esophis gives us a great account of what actually happened. Now, at other times, the evil spirit, again, this evil spirit, the devils, I mean, this is... Uh, filled him with agitation and terror, so that he rushed about in furious haste, from place to place, and crept, if he could, under the bed, and hid himself among the pillows. And then, when the horror came upon him, he would rush out with hot and violent speed, and run to the windows, and throw himself down. And as his attendant, in spite of their respect for him as king, had to run after him, and lay hold of him, to prevent him from dashing himself down and being killed. And the queen, that's Queen Sophia, was obliged to give orders for the carpenters to come and fix bars in the windows and close them up for the whole of that side of the palace in which the king lived. Moreover, they selected strong young men to act as his chamberlains and guard him, for when they were obliged in the way I have described to run after him and seize him, as he was a powerful man, Emperor Justin was a powerful man, he would turn up on them, up upon them and seize them with his teeth and tear them, and two of them he bit so severely about the head as seriously to injure them, and they were ill, and report got about the city that the king, Emperor Justin, that is, had eaten two of his chamberlains. And sometimes, as was said, they even had to tie him up while he screamed and howled and uttered words without meaning. But if they said to him, Harith, Harith, Harith was the name of the king of the king of the Arabian kingdom of Hirach, which was allied to Persia. So if they said the word Harith is coming for you, he would be still in a moment and run away and hide himself. And any name which they mentioned was enough to frighten him and make him run away and be quiet and creep under his bed. And there were other things more disgraceful than these, and more lawless, which were openly spoken of without fear by everyone in the city. These few which had recorded we have upon the testimony of many, for they were the constant subject of conversation. He continued then, not for a few days, but five more years, the five final years of his life, and, th and thus tried and tortured with our brief account of his state, we have given up the authority of others. Now, in this disordered state uh, of, of the king's intellect, those about him devised various kinds of amusement, both to divert his, atten his attention and in the hope of restoring him to the use of his reason. The most successful of these was a little wagon with a throne upon it uh, for him to sit upon, and having placed on him his chamberlains, drew it about and ran with him backwards and forwards for a long time. He, in delight, and admiration at their speed desisted from many of his absurdities. Another was an organ which they kept almost constantly playing day and night near his chamber. And as long as he heard the sound of the tunes which played, he remained quiet, but occasionally, even then, a sudden horror would come upon him, and he would 
break out in cries and be guilty of strange actions. For once when the patriarch came to visit him and drew near and made his obeisance, seeing that the king was agitated, he signed him with the sign of the cross, upon which the emperor raised his hand and struck him so heavy a blow on the head that the patriarch reeled and felt on his back and a good distance from him while the king exclaimed, an evil end be thine, and go and sign thyself in thy own devils may get out of thee. The rest meanwhile took the bishop and raised him up, but it was some time before he returned to his senses, being stunned by the severity of the blow. Uh, and at the time it was impossible for the patriarch not to pay the customary visits to the palace upon his entering cautiously, and under his guard the king at the sight of him fell into a fit of laughter and jumping up laid hands upon him and took from him shield his mitra which is the insignia of the episcopal office and spread it out and put it up on his head like a woman's hood and took and looking at it he said how well it becomes you now my lord patriarch only you should put on some gold lace like the ribbons which ladies wear upon their heads at the time standing at a window overlooking the seashore he began to cry like those who go out Walking crockery, who will buy my pans? And many other such things he did, which is impossible to relate, and which were wrought in him by the devil. Again, we see the devil doing all these things, according to John of Ephesus, um, to whom it was given up, in which the common talk of every city and every village, house, and street, and tavern, within and without Constantinople, and even uh, upon the way all men talked to them with much wonder and astonishment. And of course, um, so when Emperor Justin fell sick, his wife Sophia made the commander of the Excubadores, Tiberius, Caesar. And when the five years were over and Emperor Justin was dead, mad and dead, Justin uh, Tiberius the second Caesar became Augustus he became the Emperor and the complete ruler of the Empire and he sold Sophia as well and he became Emperor Tiberius was a good Emperor and so was Morris but, but after the death of Morris came utter chaos the Roman Empire the Eastern Roman Empire began to collapse with the death of Morris and the advent of a crazy, stupid dictator, Phocas. So here we have a great description of the madness of Emperor Justin II, nephew of the great Justinian. A solidus of Eastern Roman Emperor Justin II, who went mad 